Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Tony with HVAC Explained. I'm currently looking at a packaged unit. This is a carrier. It's R22 and it's got natural gas heating to it. Okay, it's a packaged unit. What I mean by packaged, it's all self-contained. It's got your heat and it's got your cooling combined. What's typically at a residential house is a split system. The condenser sits outside, the A coil, air conditioning evap coil sits inside above the furnace or if it's a heat pump, goes into an air handler. Well, it's about 82 degrees out here in Pittsburgh and he said the unit's running, but it's not cooling. Okay, that tells me a few things. One, we have power. Two, we could have a bad capacitor causing either the compressor or condenser fan motor not to kick on. Could be three, could be low on charge. The filter could be plugged up. Um, there could be a numerous uh, electrical problems. Could even be a simple thermostat that's not even turned on. But when he said it was running, I said, all right, it's not cooling, I'll come out. So that's one thing us service techs do. We get to the bottom of it, troubleshoot, fix it, be done with it, okay? Let me show you what I'm looking at. Okay guys, so the unit is currently running at this time. I thought it'd be a, a good time to make a little video here. All right, so you see this air filter. Okay, this was white. It is dirty. It's not plugged solid, but it, it's pretty dirty, okay? Due for replacement, way past due, in my opinion. Okay, so what that can cause, when you have a plugged filter or lack of airflow, you can freeze a coil. Well, let's take a look in here and let's take a look. of airflow if your blower motor shuts down if a capacitor goes bad on the blower motor somehow it shuts it down your filter could be plugged you could have dampers vents shut or blocked with something it could be low on charge okay that can cause this as well our blower motor definitely is running and I, I know our vents are open inside I already went inside to check the thermostat so our air filter was rather dirty. What we gotta do is shut off cooling, disconnect it, let it fall out. Leave these panels off, let it fall out. Actually, I'm gonna probably hit it with a garden hose to kind of try to rinse it off, just warm it up quicker. Ta da da. It's gonna take a little while for this to uh, thaw out, but uh, I'm gonna take some access panels off. After removing this access panel to give more view to the evaporator coil to allow it to thaw out better. Here's our coil. Our air filter is supposed to be right in here. Well, the whole coil is just froze up solid. And I don't mean frosted. I mean solid block of ice. Look how thick that ice is on the compressor, okay? Um, just use my finger for scale. It's almost as thick as my finger. Actually, it's thicker than my finger. So, okay. So, obviously, it's froze up. Um, I'm believing it's from low charge at this time. Uh, probably a combination, but I am not adding gas. You do not add gas when it's froze up. Never. You wait till it's completely thawed out. Your coils, everything, the fans are running. Everything's back to where it should be. And a new filter, too. So, always let it thaw out. So, I'm going to use this garden hose. And city water is sitting at like 55 degrees, but that should help uh, thaw it out quicker. So, but let's go from As there. As you guys can see, just city water is thawing this out. Look how thick that is. Okay. Remember, lock out, tag out, shut off that power. It's just thawing it out quicker. You do not want to use an ice pick or anything like that. Okay, I'm believing this unit's just low on gas. 
Um, I take care of my dentist and eye doctor, go to their houses and whatnot. Um, this is for his old business, so got to do it, help people out. So they trust me and I'm honest and fair. Working good actually. Okay, as you can see, that's like a three quarter inch OD copper line. Look how thick that ice is on there. I always tell people when it looks like a baseball bat, give me a call. Ah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, guys, like I said, don't pry it away. Either let it thaw on its own with, with the natural outdoor air, or you can use a garden hose. This is just um, city water, so it's whatever, 50 degrees, 55 degrees, but that's above 32 degrees, so that'll melt it just fine. It's slow, wasting water, but whatever. Hey, I'm getting this up and running quicker for my customer. So. Doing good. And actually, this whole slab would probably come off in one big chunk if I um, get this water behind it enough. So, yep, slow and steady. As you can tell, our evaporator coil is clean, so that's one less thing that could cause it to freeze up. So, so far we have our air filter, and it could be low on charge at this time. So far, those two things. Let me try to pull this big chunk off of here. Remember, don't pick at this. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Size of my hand, just for scale. Pretty hefty, everybody, pretty hefty. And we know our drain's clear, too. So, I'm on. I'll let that thaw out a little bit. That looking? There's a big pile of ice. Big pile. There you go. All right. Looking a lot bif different. Night and day difference. Night and day. There you go. Now we got airflow. That's good. Okay, guys, let me explain what I'm doing here. Okay, on most outdoor equipment, okay, they'll have a separate port where you can bring in your hoses and testing tools and whatnot so you can hook up. So you can put the panel, the access panel, because if we go to check air conditioning pressures, okay, if we go to check pressures with this door off, your airflow is right there. Path of least resistance, it's gonna grab air out of here. Therefore, it'll start refreezing your coil because of a lack of airflow. So I put my gauge ports right through the side hole. You could also come up from underneath as long as you can get that panel like 99% shut. Now, I also have a thermometer that I'm sticking on the pipe. I wanna put it at either a three o'clock or nine o'clock position, try to get it as close there as possible. Stick it before your hose, okay? Because after here, it's going back to the compressor. If I should have to add refrigerant, it'll go that direction, not affecting my thermometer, okay? So therefore, I can check superheat coming back. I can meter in a little bit of charge without affecting temperature, saving time, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and put that panel on um, and I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes, watch temperature and pressures. So here we go. Okay guys, I'm gonna stick back in the disconnect and fire this bad boy up. You do not, when a system is off for a while or you're just gassing it up for the first time, you do not want to start adding gas immediately. Just let the pressures do their thing, let the system run, okay? It'll balance out. Okay, I don't want to make any judgment calls yet, not 100%, but right now, let me get this for you guys. 
Anybody want a job holding this camera? Okay, so I'm not judging it yet, but if you look at that green scale, that is R22, okay? It's at about 32 to 34 degrees, okay? 32 degrees Fahrenheit, we start freezing. 34 is slightly above, okay? I'm gonna let this run. I'm not doing anything yet. Because that air filter was plugged up, that'll drop down the suction pressure, causing it to freeze more. Now, try to zoom on out here. Checking superheat. Okay, now what I am doing here, that is the compressor, okay? That is that evaporator coil that was all froze up. I wanna take the temperature reading, write it down, then look at my gauges at R22 scale, okay? See how much it's gone up? You see that? Now we're above 40 on that green scale, R22, that's the green scale. It's at like 41. Now let's make sure that correlates. We look at this outside gauge, we're at 55, 60, 65, 70, 71-ish. We look at our R22 scale, PSIG, go down, 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 70, 70 to 71. Um, we're at 41, 42 degrees. Okay, and you can see it's moved up just slightly higher. Okay, that's good. Okay, so coming over, just say 41, 42 degrees, subtract that from 67. Where am I at there? Uh, 25 degrees, superheat, 25 degrees. That's not bad. Okay, it could be a little bit better, but you could see how much that's changed in the time I've been talking. I'm gonna shut the camera off, let it run a little bit longer, check it from there. Here we go. Okay, guys, coming back at you here. Okay, so just watching my gauges, letting the unit do its job. Okay, now we're dealing with R22. You follow it up the green scale, we're at between 40 and 50. Okay, now that is the evaporator coil temperature. It will not freeze at that point. If it was at 32 or below, or if the filters were plugged, or if the coil was plugged, or the metering device, or the fan motor bad, blower motor, then it would freeze up. But as of now, we're great, we're golden, everything looks great. Now, okay, what does this mean? We're looking for superheat. Compressor, that's that coil that froze up. Okay, here's our temperature, 64 degrees, right or down, 64. Take our gauges, which was what, 75? Okay, we gotta look on our chart and convert it. We look at R22, PSIG, 74, 76. We are at roughly 44, 45 degrees. You subtract it from there, we're at what, 19 superheat? We had a bad filter, dirty filter, lack of maintenance. There you guys go. End result, lack of maintenance, a $3 filter, cost my customer you now I'll take care of them but I'm gonna make a profit so have a good day everybody stay safe hope you're learning if you like what you see here leave some comments leave some likes tell me what you guys want to see or explain I'll see what I can do thank you